We are ready to begin. So Karen, if you don't mind introducing yourself for those who may not already know you. Okay, uh, thanks Therese for getting us started today. I am Karen Elfner. You may know me also as Karen Childs, just to, if you're confused about who I am. Um, I have been in charge of evaluation for the project um, since we've been doing school-wide PBIS, so uh, for a long time. And um, I have not always been the person who's been involved with, um, or been the primary person in charge of model schools. So, um, but Nicole Fintel, who's been very involved with our evaluation and heading up the model schools has been out on maternity leave. And so I have been stepping in and trying to keep that ship going while she's on maternity leave. She will be coming back at least part time at the very beginning of June, so before model schools open. So I'm doing my best to represent um, today for her. So our objectives are we're going to just kind of quickly review the prerequisites, application materials, and supporting um, information and resources for the process. And then I'm going to, in the PowerPoint, have an explanation of what the portal looks like, the new portal for this year's model school application, both at the district level and a school level. And then I'm going to actually show you um, the demo version of the model school application. You won't be able to access the new revised application for this year until um, probably very close to, if not June 16th, which is the opening date. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you had a PowerPoint that illustrated each of the screens so you will be very familiar with them when it does open. And I'll show you what that looks like live and give you a chance to ask any questions that you have as I go through those. So as you're probably familiar uh, by now, this year, our, we have one level of model school. And we simplified that for this year because being a COVID year with all the many things that we're struggling with in the schools and in our lives in general, we wanted to emphasize resilience, um, the focus being on just continuing to implement the components of PBIS that finding how PBIS can help us in these very difficult times and really leaning into those elements of PBIS to be um, a help rather than seeing it as just another thing that we're having to continue to do when we're already overwhelmed. So this year, our model school is the PBIS Resilience Award. There's just one level of award. The prerequisites are listed here. You have to be a trained active school, submit your pick by December 1st. So if you didn't do that, it's too late. But it's not too late to submit your benchmarks by the 15th of June, the TFI, both tier two and tier three by June 15th, and to receive a DC recommendation. So those are the absolute prerequisites. The benchmarks does have a, a threshold score as it always has in the past, the TFI does not. So you note that uh, the tier one walkthrough is not a requirement, outcome data summary is not a requirement, but it is available to be entered um, for the end of the year this year, but they aren't prerequisites for model schools. Uh, we uh, understood that for many tier one walkthroughs may not be as relevant if you didn't have a lot of on-site school, might be difficult to make that happen this year and outcome data, discipline data, depending on how much um, homeschooling or um, remote learning you had, your numbers may be quite atypical this year. And so we did not want to have those numbers be a uh, requisite for consideration for model schools. So in the model school application, each school will be describing three things. You'll be responding to uh, three prompts and they'll upload at least one and up to two artifacts that uh, support at least one or two of these prompts. 
Um, so how they adapted their PBIS system for the virtual or fluctuating virtual and, um, and in-person learning environments, how they monitor discipline events and ensure equitable discipline during these difficult times, and then how they supported students that needed more than your basic tier one supports um, during this year. So those are the three basic prompts that they're gonna be asked to respond to. So we have a lot of resources as always to support the application process. So if you go to the model school link on the home page, then that's where a live binder is. And there's information regarding an overview of our model school, the prerequisites and the requirements. Um, there's resources for helping you and your school submit the data and monitor the data submissions. So that's in the evaluation for PBSES. So if you go to the home page and look under that link, it'll take you to the live binder section for evaluation. We know that some districts, some schools are getting those two links confused and trying to go to the model school link to submit evaluation data. And it is a little confusing. We're sorry that it's not all one link. Um, and maybe at some point we'll have a single sign on, but for now, this is how it is. So we know some of the best practices are to, you know, it's, it's not early in the year. So if you didn't do step one, you know, next year, monitor those implementation outcome uh, throughout the year and engage in problem solving. But before you submit the application, it should be done as a team and plan the responses as a team. Um, we do have a template um, that teams could use to kind of draft their um, responses to the prompts so that they can be all prepped. So when they go in after, um, after June 16th, when the application opens, they can really just be entering what's agreed upon at that point in time. So the portal opens on June 16th, which is one day after um, the, the evaluation cycle ends for almost everything. Typically everything ends by June 15th for evaluation. This year we're leaving the outcome data summary open through the end of June because we know that there were some schools that were in districts that um, had stayed open longer and we wanted to give people plenty of time to get those data together if they were going to report them. So um, now this is the part where I'm going to show you the static images of the district login in the new system. Um, district coordinators uh, will be going to the model school, not the evaluation link. You will know that you're in the right place because it will say um, model school or PMOD. So you can kind of check yourself there. You make sure you, when you put your credentials in there, you use a password that you also put your user type as district. I sometimes forget because we're at FMHI level. And sometimes I'll just be in a hurry and put my name and, and password and then forget and just do sign in and it will tell me I can't access. And then I'll remember, oh, forgot to select my correct access type. So, Actually, I'm going to move ahead because when you as a district coordinator log in, the first thing that you will see if you have any schools that are eligible, have met all the prerequisites and are eligible except for your recommendation, that's the last thing that needs to happen in order for them to submit an application. That's the first thing that you will see when you log in. So it, your screen will look something like this. Your um, your district name will be up here in the drop down, which won't be able to drop down because it's your district. And it'll list any of the schools that um, are eligible for your recommendation. And if you know what the rec what the prerequisites are, that they completed a pick, that they completed a benchmarks and got the minimum score, which is at least the 80%, that they completed a TFI tier two and tier three, right? So if they did all of those things and you can 
give them a recommendation, then they can submit. So you could go ahead and select the little dot and click recommend, and those schools would then be able to submit an application. Um, if you wanted to look at the prerequisites, what you would do is go up to the tab at the top that says school and go to school prerequisite check. And then in the prerequisite status, you would select awaiting DC recommendation and it would give you those same lists of schools, but it would give you the chance to view the prerequisite details for those schools. So if you wanted to see what that looked like. And then for instance, this test school 32, it would look like this. It was a school that met all the prerequisites. They did a pick, they submitted BOQ, they met the minimum score for BOQ, they submitted the TFI tier two and tier three. The only thing they're waiting for is the DC approval. Right? So this is what a prerequisite check looks like for a school that's awaiting DC recommendation. So you could just go back to the prerequisite list and that would take you back to this list um, here that tells you all the prerequisites. So you can recommend all of your schools if you want. Um, if you wanted to check on all of your schools, you could do prerequisite check for all of your schools and that will give you the information about all of your schools. And then you can look at and find out schools that were, you see who's missing a pick or who's missing submitted benchmarks, but their score wasn't high enough and that sort of thing. So when you um, are looking at your homepage as a district coordinator, you will be able to see, oops, sorry, you will be able to see all of these things. You can see who has been recommended. So once you've recommended that a school, recommended a school that has met all the prerequisites for a model school application, then they could show up in this list. That means you recommended them, they've met all the prerequisites, but they have not started an application. Then the next step would be those schools who started an application, but they didn't submit it yet. So they've done any part. They maybe did one of the prompts, but not all three, or they did all three prompts and didn't submit their artifact yet, or they even submit, put uploaded their artifact, but they just saved it to submit at a later time, which I'll show you when I get to the school level. Or they submitted their application. And once a school submits their application, after they complete the three prompts and upload one or two artifacts, our staff are going to review their prompts and the artifact or artifacts and make sure that their prompt responses are on topic, that they are indicating um, a, a response that is relevant to the topic, that makes sense. Um, and as long as they um, are indicating something that is a response to that topic, um, that can meet the criteria of being a response to that topic, and then they will get credit for, for that. We're not um, qualifying that, that they necessarily did something extremely spectacular, but just that they, as we said, that they were resilient, that they persisted in an effort to implement in these areas. Um, and then the last item that you would see on your list as a DC are the schools who met the criteria you recommended, they submitted their application, it was reviewed by the project staff and they were awarded their status. So you may have a few questions, but they may be answered when I go through the school level log. So school level login, again, they go in to the PMOD from the home page, and then they enter they don't have to select school, access, uh, school level access type because that's the default. So they get lucky, they can just hit sign. In. Then what they will get is, uh, please click on the start button to, to begin your school application. 
if they met the prerequisites, they will get this message. If they did not, it will tell them that they didn't. And that little prerequisite box, which I don't think I have an illustration of, but I'll show you one when we go to the live site, will show them the prerequisites that they met and did not meet. So they will know immediately why they can't proceed. So the application first page looks very much the same as it has in the past. The, whoops, sorry. the person who um, is filling out the application is the contact person for the multiple application. And that person's name and especially their email needs to be, um, is an important one because that's the person who's gonna get the information if and when they receive an award of Model School, it's the notification will go to that email. It also goes to every DC active for that district. So if you're primary or any of the secondary DCs, they all get this information as well. So they get this uh, congratulations, you've met all the criteria for resilience award. And then they get a screen that looks something like this without these big letter words in the middle. This is my um, abbreviated description of what they're entering in each of these three areas. So they're describing how they adapted their PBIS system this year to support the virtual and or fluctuating virtual and in-person. They're describing how they monitored discipline events and ensured equitable discipline during this year, particularly if they had um, if they you can't, you know, had a lot of in-person and fluctuated learning situations, and then how they supported students that needed more intensive levels of behavioral support. And then they, here's at the bottom where they're gonna choose a file to upload one or two. So they, this is says required upload. It's the first one is required. And the second one says optional. So that is pretty clear that they don't have to do both, but they have to do the first one. So this is how we upload the artifacts. The file types that are allowed are PDF, images that are JPEG or PNG, and Word documents or Excel documents. The file size can't be larger than five megabytes. So um, we tried to remove any of the weird naming convention blocks that had gotten us hung up on some of the things in the past. So hopefully, other than the, the file type and the size, you should have no problem. If your schools ever run into any, or if you as a school run into any problem uploading, um, you can email your district coordinator. They will let your staff contact know, um, and we can give you some assistance or get that loaded for you. Don't let that um, if you have met those requirements that are on the screen there and you still have any problem, um, don't panic. We'll help you overcome whatever barrier is causing that. We've tried several ways to break it and weren't able to break it, but uh, you know technology. If there's a way to break it, people will find a way <laughs> and it'll happen. Um, so what you do is you click on where it says choose a file. So I'm going to go to the required upload. I'm going to click choose a file and it'll open another window and it will, I can navigate through my computer to the file that I want to um, use. And once I click on it, then I click on open and it will put that file and I can tell it's it has successfully uploaded it because it will put that name right here next to where it says choose file. So right here, it says no file chosen, but after I've done the upload, it puts the name of my file next to it. So now I know it has successfully uploaded my artifact. Now, um, after I have uploaded my artifact, which I can see because I see the file name right there, I can, I could save it and submit it later. So maybe I wanna wait and let my team review this before I decide that we're gonna submit it. But I'll, if I don't remember to submit it and September 1st comes and goes, 
I've lost my opportunity to be in model school because the deadline has passed. Now my district coordinator has me on that list as saying I started it, but I didn't submit it. So hopefully my district coordinator will send me a prompt and remind me, but um, you wanna make sure because it'll tell you your progress is saved, you can come back later, but you have to come back later if you wanna submit your application. If you're completing the application um, and you don't, and you skip a field, this little yellow box with a little warning symbol will appear. So you have to submit you have to fill in each of the three boxes and you have to choose, uh, upload at least one of these files and it has to be the required upload. If you did it in the optional upload, it, it would not meet the requirement. So if you try to submit, it won't allow you, but this is now on item three, which is at the bottom of the screen. So I'm seeing it near where I'm trying to submit it. But if I go submit and it's not, it's not giving me the, uh, thank you for submitting your application, you will be notified via email. So this is what, this is this sign. This pops up after you submit and it tells you, I'm gonna get an email once my application has been approved. If I don't see this thing, my, my application was not successfully submitted. So what, what happens usually is maybe on item number one, I didn't, I forgot to fill out item number one, but I don't see this little yellow thing because it, I have to scroll up the page to see it. So you wanna make sure and make sure your schools, if you're DC, are um, seeing this next page after they submit that says, thank you for submitting. Cause that's the way that they can be sure that they have successfully submitted. So once uh, our project staff have, have reviewed um, and awarded the finalized award, then the email of the, the contact person who was on the first page of the application, that person will get emailed in every act of DC and the email will include the certificate, the ribbon and the link to the video and all the attachments so that you can share your model school success. So how do you save and print your model school certificate? So this is another, so it'll pop up. Um, your, when you get the email, you get this certificate and it'll say you can print. So you first you go to print the certificate and then you get the screen that says, yes, I want to print and make sure it's the printer that you want to use or however, if you want to save it as a PDF, you can here in my print destination, I'll click save as PDF. And when I do that, a, a, another pop-up comes where I can navigate to the place on my computer where I want to save the PDF. So then I can save that certificate. So that's how you print or save your model school certificate. Downloading your ribbon. So you get the, the test ribbon. Uh, there's a little um, button or um, linkable click that says download digital ribbon. And if you click on that, then it will bring up the image. And then if you Click on that, it will open it in um, your photos. And then you can um, you can save it or print it or whatever you like to do with it at that point. So some ideas for using your digital school ribbon. Um, you could put those on your website, your email signatures, parent newsletter, social media, school communications, um, and many other ideas. In fact, if you have ideas about how you've used your 
digital model school ribbons, please go ahead and put those in the chat box because people love to hear and share their ideas for how they how they use those. It's always interesting. Okay, I'm gonna while I'm getting ready to transition to the site, I'll let you type questions that you have in the chat and let Therese field some of those questions while I'm transitioning. Awesome plan. Thank you, Karen. Uh, the chat has been very quiet so far today. So um, please, folks, if you have questions, if you want to double check something, uh, feel free to either type them in the chat or um, I think you might even be able to turn on your microphones for a moment and feel free to ask us through the mic. I'm going to log in first as a district coordinator. You see it, Therese? I do. Great. Okay. So um, as I said, when I when you log in as a district coordinator, if you have schools that needed to be recommended or were awaiting recommendations, those show up first when you log in. So that's what's happened here. So I have right up top those schools that I need to recommend. So if I go ahead and recommend, if I select, I can select as many as I want and then recommend. And now they've gone from my recommended, and now they're down here in my, um, they, they've just been added to the bottom of my recommended not started. My schools really need to get busy, look at them all. Um, so now I've got all these schools that I've been recommended but not started. I've got a couple that started, but they haven't submitted it yet. I have one, a few that have submitted that are being reviewed, and then I have some that already have their model school status. So that's that's kind of what things will sort of look like once the application opens for district coordinators. Um, now, if you wanted to look at school prerequisites, that's the way you do go up to the school tab up here and go to school prerequisites check. And this is where um, you, you will only be able to look at this school year and you will only be able to look at your district. Now, if you wanted to look at a particular school, you could pick that school. Um, but if you wanted to check, for instance, um, all of those who were waiting your recommendation and you wanted to look at the prerequisites for those schools, well, you, you pretty much know what those are, right? Because they've met all the prerequisites, which you know what those are. Um, this year is so much easier. In the past, there were lots of criteria and prerequisites would give you, um, you get a little bit more information um, in that. But for this year, it's not as informative. So if once you've left that initial login screen, right? So how do I get back to that, that nice page that kind of had everything summarized for me? So I just go back to the schools, go back to recommendation, and then it takes me right back to not recommended, recommended, started, submitted, and so I'm back to where I started from. So those are probably some of the main things that as a district coordinator you're at for you. The other thing um, that I wanted you to know is that the download, which is something we added just in the last couple of years, is the ability for all of your models to be able to download for all of your model schools, their stickers and certificates for the current school year. This won't be available until the model school um, application period is, is complete. So starting, um, I believe it will be starting September 1st, but um, if there's some change to that, we can let you know when Nicole gets back. But uh, when I spoke to the programmer, uh, his understanding, and we do have a new programmer working with us now, uh, was that it wouldn't be possible to do that until until it was a complete set. So that's my understanding. You will be able to download them all, but not until the application period is complete. 
any questions or anything you want to see on the district level before I go to a school level. So Karen, there was one question and it's not exactly limited to the district level, um, but we did have a question about, did you mention whether there was a specific score on the benchmarks of quality that um, schools would need to qualify? Um, the, the score for being model status historically has always been at least 80%. And that will definitely not change this year. So, okay. so it's not going to be lower than 80%. <laughs> That's good. Because I, I think, and correct me if I'm completely confabulating this, but I think uh, historically, we would actually use um, like an average from the state where it would be based on the statewide data. We would look at the statewide data to determine if we needed to increase the threshold. Yeah. Yes, that is it. So, but we, but we won't be doing. I don't think that we're going to do that this year. I think that we're because we're not because what we're looking for is resilience and persistence in effort. But we are looking. It is recognition. So we are. We're. Um, I did verify that we're not. We're not lowering that threshold, but we're we're not looking to increase that threshold. That's really good news. And, and so let me just check in with Tracy. Did that address your question? And, and also Tracy had a question about a certain percentage on the fall pick. Yeah, um, that but, was my question. I thought I heard 80% on the pick. So I just wanted to clarify it, but it was 80% on benchmarks of quality. Is that is that what it is? Okay. Your, the pick does not have um, a... Got the, it that we that we that all right we, i heard 80 percent on something so <laughs> all right yeah, thanks yeah, yeah. Thanks. so the 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 pick is really um determined you know supposed to be there more as a progress monitoring sort of um check in at the part way and it's not designed to be um something where it's as evaluative it's more something to be used more along the lines of a coaching tool Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Thank you for clarifying that. Any other questions? So far, that has been the only one. Well, thanks for the question. Okay, I'm gonna log in as a school now. Let's see if I can find my... Right. Of course, they have all these really funky passwords. Okay, so I just logged in as a school, um, and huh, I got I. This is one of the ones that the DC had to recommend, and I just recommended them. So they get to go in and um, complete their application. So I'm just going to do a really quick application. Um, if you have a, a Twitter handle, a Facebook handle, and you put that in there, it gives us the opportunity to give you give the school shout outs and things. So it's a good idea to go ahead and put those in there if you have them. But, um, but those have been really helpful in the past. Um, and actually we've had superintendents pick up on school recognition through Twitter before. Um, I think we may have had someone at an even broader level than just a district superintendent, uh, but I know superintendents for sure have sometimes picked up on that sort of call out. Mm -hmm. So if you're on social media, make sure you put those handles in there. So this is where they get uh, to acknowledge that they met all the criteria. Um, and then here is here is where they get to enter the prompts. And there are, um, as they start typing, it'll tell you they have um, 3,000 characters per prompt. And as they're typing, it tells you how many characters you have left in the prompt. So um, this is good information as you're um, 
doing your template if you're practicing before it opens on the 16th, you know, just you can test that out and make sure that you are you know, limiting your description and making sure you're efficient with your words so that you're not um, going over 3,000 characters. We've had schools in the past that would type up on Word their description, and then when they go to enter them in the in the model school portal, they just type till they got as many characters and then they just stop. And then we, you know, we're reviewing their description and and it's not sufficient or it's incomplete and it doesn't even make sense. And and then they come back later and go, well, we had it on paper, but we couldn't fit it all in there. <laughs> so um, so then they after the fact they want to bring back the proof to show they really had a complete description. Well, so what we recommend is that you take the time in advance to, you know, use wisely the characters that we give you so that you can make the most of your description. So you put your description in and if I hit submit, it's going to give me one of those funny little warnings that I didn't, this is a required field. I have to choose a file. I have to upload. Let's try an Excel file. That's fun. Okay. All right, so I, that I, was a very clever test, Karen. Uh, that was a CSV that looked like an Excel file. <laughs> It was. Um, so now I saved it. I'm still logged in. I can go back. This is what it looks like. Let me try again. Um, let's try to find um, what's another one. Oh, here's a picture. The JPEG. It liked that one. That was a perfect choice. And that's Henry. That's Nicole's baby that she's home with. That's why she's not here with you today. Okay, so I've submitted. See, this is my confirmation email. This is the this is the thing you want to make sure as a school and make sure you, your schools are getting. Thank you for submitting your application. If I don't see this, it's not submitted. So I'm I'm there. I'm done. And now I just wait for my email, All right? Um, I did want to show you what, what it would look like if you are a school that did not meet. Just so you kind of get one idea of what your school or you as a school. Whoop. Yes, okay. So. You kind of think that you're going to get to do something here, but then you have not met all the prerequisites. And it tells you why I did not submit my fall pick record. So, therefore, my DC could not even give me approval anyway because I didn't meet my prerequisites. So, at least I understand now why. And if I say, oh, I think I did because I sent it to my district coordinator and she was going to send it in for me, <laughs> these are some of the stories that we get. So um, there you go. Uh, so that's what the school, it's pretty simple this year. I don't think I have anything else that I had on my list to, the new system is not gonna be available until the application opens. And that's why, in fact, I'll, I'll show you again. So I think I need to go to the real project website. Um, and actually in the TA chat binder, oh, that's where it is. There's um, in the TA chat online binder, there's a fillable model school application form. It's a practice form. 
Um, so the schools can be all ready to go. They can practice their prompt. And now you know, because I don't think it says in here, but you know it's 3,000 characters. So uh, I think we did this at the beginning of the year and now we've programmed it. So now you know uh, the rest of the story. So 3,000 characters. So you can have your schools or yourself, if you're a, you are a school, make sure you practice and get those 3,000 characters. Okay. Yeah, I could see that tripping up um some folks so because we we couldn't have known to put it on this version of the support form but um definitely communicating back that schools only have three three thousand characters per question um i'm happy to answer any of the questions or review back over any of the elements of the site um just let me know and in the meantime um, as you guys, if you're typing questions, um, continue to do so. Uh, but otherwise, if you could let us know how satisfied you were with today's chat, then we would appreciate that feedback as well. That is awesome. So Karen, that, that's kind of it. That's the whole process for the current school year in a nutshell. That's it. All right. Wonderful. Then I would say for those of you who are hanging with us, uh, just know that the content for today's session is officially over. So thank you again for joining us.